Hello friends, welcome to the first proper part of the Intro to Media Theory series that I'm doing. Um, this week we're going to be talking, well I say this week, this episode we're going to be talking about semiotics, which as my A-level media teacher put it, is the science of signs. Now that doesn't mean a whole lot right now, but by the end it should, bear with me. Um, this is going to sound really obvious, but we should start by determining what a sign is. Um, and according to that Google widgety thingy, a sign is A. An object, quality, or event whose presence or occurrence indicates the probable presence or occurrence of something else. And B. A gesture or action used to convey information or an instruction. And well, when I wrote the essay, I assumed that that was going to be like way off the ball compared to how I'm going to use it. But no, that's pretty spot on. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to define a sign as anything which conveys meaning. Which those two definitions just said, but in more words. Now that sounds like really vague and all-encompassing, and that's because it is. Like, literally everything is or can be a sign. Logos are signs, paintings are signs, signs are signs. Uh, and semiotics is the way that people interpret these signs, or how these signs affect our lives, and... Well, that's it. Short one this time. Right, editing job's gonna be a fucking doddle on this one. Sorry. Uh, there's more. Because... What does that have to do with media theory? Um, why is that so important? Why did this? Why do these things affect our lives? Now that, that bit, that bit's going to take a little, little bit longer. There are a number of semiologists. That's people who study semiotics, and they all sort of have different approaches to the topic. And today we're going to be discussing two in particular. The first one is Saussure, and the second one is Morris. Why those two? Because Saussure is like the first semiologist that you get taught, or the first one that I got taught. So it's pretty ingrained and. I personally just like how Morris approaches semiotics. So between the two of them, we should get a pretty good, pretty good uh, knowledge of the subject. So starting with Saussure. Ferdinand de Saussure, or Ferdi to his mates, I can only assume, viewed semiotics as a scientific discipline based on linguistics, but you know, amplified to a wider base. He thought this because words are the primary form of communication between humans. So if we understand the basics of that, we can apply it to other things, in this case, mass media. Uh, his basis was this vaguely confusing looking maths problem. Sign equals signifier plus signified. Look, I'm sorry, but they love their jargon. Let's break this down for you. Uh, we know what the sign is. The, the signifier is the physical existence of the sign. So take for example, this image of a black apple here. The signifiers are the color, the shape, and the form of the sign. So in this case, it's an image, it's black, it's apple shaped. Um, the signified is the meaning that we can gather from the sign, which is of course, Apple computers, the, you know, the, the the technology firm. This seems obvious, like, but like totally in the abstract. What about this image says technology? Nothing. Which is why Sassio explicitly stated a sign is both parts of the equation combined. He also spoke about language and, and signs being a creative and fluid art rather than a solid tool. And more importantly, the signified may not be the same from person to person. One of you may be looking at this sign and see it as a status symbol, a sleek and top of the top of the line tech top cutting edge technology and another person may see it as overpriced and crap. Now the issues with this framework is that they're like they're way too simplistic and it kind of just boils down to you know identifying signs but we're going to take what we just learned and apply it to our next practitioner Morris. Uh, Morris split the way we look at signs into three categories semantics, syntactics and pragmatics and again don't worry, we're gonna break it all down. I hate jargon as much as you do. Uh, the semantics of the sign are basically what we discussed earlier, what the sign is and what it means. So again, Apple uh, means technology, but might also mean overpriced. Clearly that's not the only way a sign can exist. The syntactics of a sign is how that sign relates to other signs around it. Take, for example, a red traffic light. Like the semantics of the sign are simply, it's a red light. I know that red traffic lights mean stop. So it means stop. The semantics are it means stop. But the syntactics of the sign is how it relates to everything around it. Say, for example, the lines on the road and the green light that isn't lit up next to it. The lines on the road, of course, telling you where to stop or where like where not to go. And obviously, when the red light goes and the green light appears, you know that that, it, that means go. The, the syntactics is how all of these signs relate to each other. Now, the pragmatics of the sign, the pragmatics of the sign, according to Morris, is the relationship between the sign and the person reading it. Now let's take our red light example for this. The way you interact with the sign is by stopping and possibly feeling frustrated if you're one kind of driver and terrified if you're another. But both of these examples push the importance of polysemy. Polysemy? 
you think it's polysemy, which basically means the multiple readings of a sign, the, like poly meaning multiple, semi of course from semiotics. Uh, let's look at an example from the media. Let's say Shrek. Some people may just read Shrek as a typical adventure romp with not your usual champion. Other people may see it as a, like a satire on the Disney pipeline. And some people may see it as a queer acceptance story. And the good thing about polysemy and semiotics in general is that all of these readings are correct. Remember in English class when they told you that there wasn't a strict right answer, that every answer is correct no matter what, so long as you can justify it? Well, they weren't lying. And they weren't just talking about Shakespeare either. Like, if you can explain why you see something as representing something else, cool. I love it. Run with it. I want to hear it. Tell me about how Jurassic Park is secretly about the financial crash. I don't know. Do it. But that's, that's basically semiotics. It's all about picking up meaning and stuff that isn't explicitly there, but maybe like intentionally or unintentionally signaled. Uh, next time we're going to be talking about reading positions, which is a tangentially related subject, but it's way more important that you learn about semiotics before you go into reading positions, otherwise it doesn't work the other way around. If you want to see that, make sure you subscribe to my channel and, you know, hit that bell if you want the notifications, yo, that's what the cool kids say, right? There's also the like buttons and the subscribe box down there if you if you know you want a bit more, um, want a bit more interaction. Uh, there's a lovely little dialogue going down in the comment section so far. And if you really, really, really want to help me, check out my Patreon, and my Patreon is where lovely, lovely people like you may help out with a little bit of money every month, starting from $2 a month, going all the way up to $20 a month if you are stupid and made of money. And a special shout out goes to the fresh cheese bags of the month, Alex Bryson, Ethan Saffron, The Horse of Many Names, Carl Rad, Malloy, Magpie Magus, Neurotic Anarchy, and What Would Jedi Do? Thank you to all of you, and I'll catch you on the flippity flop. Love you, bye.